All right, hello everybody, and welcome to the fifth and final basics of Tkinter tutorial for Python 3. So while uh, this is the end of my basic covering of what Tkinter is, uh, you should see it very much like my basic covering of regular expressions was, or URL lib uh, was, and all of that, because there's a whole lot of other things that we can do. Obviously, making Windows is a very vast topic, and you know I might come through and do more of an intermediate or advanced uh, Tkinter, not advanced Tkinter, but um, an expanded Tkinter tutorial. But really, my my goal here was really just to teach you guys some of the basics of Tkinter, how to add things to Tkinter, uh, event handling with Tkinter, and then from there, hopefully, you can you know look up various things you know that you might be wanting to do, and then you, hopefully you can implement it rather simply. So. Anyway, uh, with that, <clears throat> what I want to do here is show how we can display images in Tkinter uh, as well as uh, text. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to need immediately is to do images, we're going to need uh, the imaging, an imaging library. Uh, Python 2, people will use uh, PIL, Python Imaging Library, uh, but a good secondhand uh, imaging library is what's known as Pillow. And with Python 3, I highly recommend that's what we use. So to get it, uh, you can either go and download Pillow, you know, however you like your favorite way to download things is, or you can use this website here. If I remember to, I'll put a link for it in the description. If I forget, remind me. Um, and so we'll just search for Pillow. Um, I guess I'll just click on this. Okay, so here we have Pillow. Get rid of that. <clears throat> And now we're looking for, at least for me, I've got 64-bit and I'm using through Python 3.4, so you would want to download that. And then when it's done in downloading, go ahead and install it. And then once you've got it installed, uh, you're ready to continue. So if you're still waiting and all that, uh, go ahead and pause the video and then restart the video once you have it. So once you have it, uh, once you have Pillow uh, installed, what we're going to do is you're going to come up here and you're going to say from PIL import capital image um, and then we're going to do image TK so pay attention these are all caps here capital I capital I capital T okay now what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our in uh, window initialization here and we'll leave everything here um, and I think what we'll do is we'll edit this edit menu right and so right now our edit menu doesn't do anything really let's go ahead and save and run this real quick so uh, we have our file save the save does nothing we can click in it doesn't do anything and then we have exit um, and that exits and then we have this undo but undo doesn't do anything either <clears throat> so um, we'll leave save there but instead of undo let's say uh, instead we're gonna call this show image and then we're going to say this is add command, right? So add command um, self, oops, I'm sorry, uh, command equals self dot, and let me make some space here. So uh, we edit this show image, and then command equals self dot show capital IMG, okay? Self dot show image. So this is going to, this is referring to a function within our class, okay? And then we're always passing through, you know, frame through it. Um, so command equals self dot show image when we do that, and then also let's go ahead and add another command. Um, let me just we're just going to copy this line, paste this line, and instead of image text, and then instead of show img txt. Okay, easy enough. And then afterwards we add that to our menu, um, and that's it. Now we do want to define self.showImage and self.showText. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll define, um, make sure you're in line correctly. Define show image. Again, we pass through self. And we're going to say the load. So we're going to load this image. So we're going to say load equals capital image. So we're referencing this image that we loaded up here from pillow. Image.open. And now we want to open an image. So actually, we don't have an image in our uh, folder here. So let me go back to where we were. This young man doesn't have any images. Uh, we can go to pythonprogramming.net. And we can get an image of my beautiful mug right here. 
So we'll take the image from there and put that image in your uh, directory. So for me, that's actually this directory. So I'll just move that image right in here. Um, and we'll call this pick. And it's pick.png for me. So I'll move this over. Um, and we'll move this down. And so we'll open. Uh, and then what we want to open is uh, oops, pick.png. And now we're going to go ahead, we'll say render to render the image. And uh, we're going to do image tk. So again, referencing from uh, pillow. And then photo image. This is also reference, it's a function within image tk. Um, and we want to uh, render load, right, this image that we've opened here. And then um, we're going to use labels to display our image. And what labels are, they're basically you can use labels uh, to pack in text or images, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to say img for image, e equals capital label, um, and label is a part of tkinter. Uh, label, again, self, and then we're going to say image equals, you know, so like what are we using? We're going to use this rendered image. And then we're going to say image.image .image equals render. And then finally, we're going to go image.place, and we're going to place this at x equals 0 and y equals zero. Okay, and that's it. That's all we have to do. The image will be there. Next thing we want to do is we'll do define show text again self and scroll down a little bit. And uh, for this one, again, we use labels, only it's a lot easier this time. It's going to be text equals label, label self again and then text equals um hey they're good looking like that okay and then we have to pack it so we do text.pack and that basically just adds the text okay so we save that and that should be all set so let me do this let me save and run it now oh we have a no attribute show text looks like we probably yeah okay so i added that show text uh, what we ask for is just so txt so let's try that one more time save and run it there we go and now we can go edit and then show image and there we go we get this lovely image of me and then we can show text and that pops up hey they're good looking um, looks like I'm actually saying it to you so you can uh, accept that uh, so now uh, what we've done is we've got uh, some menu items here that will show the images or show the text, um, but not naturally. So it won't be there normally. It's only there if we add it. Now, um, just as a quick aside, uh, if by whatever for whatever reason you are finding that the image and text is already showing up and you just can't figure it out, uh, what's happening is generally if you do like self dot uh, this will probably do it self dot show image empty parameters and then show text empty parameters. Let me run this real quick yeah so they're already there so again I'll just take this moment to explain how Python works as far as when we're loading things in this sense we've actually uh, called the function in the initialization so so the command here uh, what's happening it's a little bit of a hacky way to run a function but it's being run nonetheless uh, even though we've not clicked the command uh, we're running the function because we specify empty parameters here and so this might be really confusing to some people as far as why this, this might happen. But again, as we read initialization window, this function is not running. It's only being defined. But then when we go to display the window and we load in these rules for the button, they're automatically being run because not, only, not anymore are we treating them as a command, but we're treating them as a function and they run. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to cover that real quick. Same thing if you accidentally did something like this on exit. Um, we could save and run this real quick and immediately before you even see the window pop up it says you know are you sure you want to exit <laughs> right um, so the window never runs um, so just uh, wanted to talk about that um, I imagine maybe someone initially will will do this in one of the earlier videos but anyway I uh, just wanted to cover why that happens um, because again like I said uh, it seems like it's come out of nowhere but then what I'm getting all these questions about uh, referencing functions before they've de been defined. So the rules of this are, are definitely confusing, I, I understand. 
Um, but I just want to nail that in. So anyway, um, that's going to conclude the Tkinter uh, basics tutorial here. Again, I realize there are just like infinite things that we can do uh, with Tkinter. Probably after uh, we do a matplotlib series, I've had a lot of requests for me to do a combination of graphing and Tkinter. Well, it just so happens that matplotlib actually already uses Tkinter uh, to give you their graph, but some people don't like that. They want to maybe have the GUI where you could, let's say, type in a stock name and it will graph that stock like in a very good looking GUI rather than in like a command window. Um, so I had a lot of requests for that, so I probably will show that uh, down the road after we do a, a matplotlib tutorial series um, for Python 3 anyway. Um, and then also, um, well, never mind. But anyway, the, the, t the purposes here was just to show all, like some of the basics of you know, event handling, buttons, text, images. And from here, you can really do all kinds of things. You could already make some pretty great uh, GUIs just with this information alone. Um, but pretty soon, you, you know, people probably want to add like a text field widget and all of that. And just understand that these are all basically widgets that we've already done, like a label is a widget, okay? And so you can put these kinds of things. Um, you can use uh, text fields, like little sliders, checkboxes, all kinds of stuff. Um, and you can store the output of like you know text fields and all that. So there's a, like a lot of things that you can do. And maybe I'll expand this tutorial in a little bit or something if there's a lot of requests to go further. But from here, you should understand the basics of Tkinter. And then if you want to do something specific, you can look up the function for it um, and then be able to do it. So um, anyway, that's going to conclude this little mini series on Tkinter on the basics of Python. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.